Muchas gracias por acompañarnos. Esta primera parte la digo en español porque está la primera diapositiva en español. Eh, este es un proyecto que nos fue aprobado en enero del año pasado. Este proyecto concluye ahora en diciembre de este año. Y el nombre del proyecto, tal cual como lo mandamos, es Errores Sintácticos y Semánticos en la Escritura Académica de Aprendices de Habla Hispana. So, I'm the person responsible for this project. Uh, teacher Benjamin Lee Stewart is been helping me with this project uh, since the beginning. And early this year, uh, we invited uh, Dr. Silvia Rodriguez. She works at the Departamento de Estadística in, in, at this university. And we're doing this presentation to you guys today. These are our final results of this project. Okay. The objectives, uh, the objectives for this project uh, are four. And we're doing we're doing a series of presentations to teachers and the students in this BA and in in conferences, in national and international conferences also. And, and this is because of the last objective, which is to present results in, in meetings and or workshops. And that's what we're doing right now, okay? Yeah, I think okay. it's uh, important to mention also one of the reasons for, for the, the study, since writing is the, the most difficult skill of all, we wanted to do a research with students, with learners in our BA, so that we could learn more about the types of errors that they commit and hopefully be able to inform uh, teachers throughout the BA uh, and start talking and thinking about how we align and work with learners throughout the BA with the writing skill. So this is kind of one step in that direction, uh, being able to uh, inform the faculty about about specific writing issues that are coming, that are common in our uh, BA. Uh, Luis, I don't know if you can uh, click the presentation view in the PowerPoint. Make it a little bit larger. Okay, so let me let me just do that. That's better. Yeah, that's better. All right, thank you. Okay. Uh, next slide. So for our study, we basically are looking at two different areas. One being the writing development, and for the purposes of our study, we are classifying writing development in terms of accuracy, complexity. And fluency. At the same time, we also looked at specific errors. We did a, an error analysis looking at uh, syntactical, morphological, and lexical errors that related to accuracy. Next slide. So when we were thinking about uh, what kind of errors we wanted to do and what kind of study, we were reading through the literature and there was there's a lot of studies where they analyze the difference between syntactic and semantic errors, and they do comparisons across cultures to see what kind of tendencies exist in terms of those types of errors. But we later decided that um, it would be best to think of semantic errors more globally, and within that or under that umbrella, we would classify or do our analysis in terms of syntactic, morphological, and lexical errors. And so this is the focus uh, of our research, looking at these types of errors, but all being under uh, what we would term as a semantic meaning. Next uh, slide. So for the purpose of our study, we're looking at errors. We're not making a distinction between mistakes and errors. We're not looking at uh, fossilization or uh, the how permanent an error is. We're simply looking and defining an error as uh, non-standard. Uh, this definition, the use of a linguistic item in a way which a fluent or native speaker of a language regards as showing faulty or incomplete learning. But basically, it's non-standard uh, language is what we're 
categorizing as an error. Next slide. All right, so we're looking at uh, the first type here, syntactic errors, as being errors of word order. And uh, they could also be errors resulting in the absence of certain constituents. So, for example, missing words, uh, sentence fragments where maybe we're missing a subject or a verb within a clause. Uh, we also, this would also include errors combining sentences in the uh, case of run on sentences and comma splices. So these would be the types of errors that would, we would classify as syntactic errors. Morphological errors are errors in nominal morphology. So for example, plurals, like errors that relate to plurals or number agreement or uncountable nouns, compounds. We also look at errors in verbal morphology. So verb tense, subject verb agreement, and passive formation. And also, this would include errors and in determiners, okay? So, for example, articles, um, this would fall into that category. Prepositions, this would also be an, a, an example of morphological errors. So, it's quite extensive, this category of morphological errors. These are some examples that, um, that uh, fall into this category. And then finally, we have lexical errors. So, lexical errors basically being of two types. We have the uh, lexical idiomatic. So this would be where maybe a word is um, maybe awkward. It doesn't interfere with meaning, but uh, it's not usually used, and it might just be kind of strange to, to use that type of word. And we also have a vocabulary error in the case of word form, and this would be uh, where this actually interferes with the meaning of the text. All right, so in terms of writing development, we'll first look at accuracy. So accuracy is the ability to be free from errors while using language to communicate in either writing or speech. So basically all of the errors that we just discussed fall into the category of accuracy more specifically. So that's a, it's a broad category, and we're going to look at uh, specifically different types of errors that are going to fall under uh, accuracy. But in addition to accuracy, we also wanted to look at complexity. A lot of times, in fact, many of the studies that we came across, they only fo focused on accuracy. And we wanted to extend that to provide more context with the, uh, the writing, the text that we were looking at and analyzing. So we also included complexity. Uh, the complexity is the development of grammatical uh, wording and is progressively more elaborate and of greater variety in syntactic patterning. Now, uh, the next slide relates to complexity. Um, in fact, can you go to the next slide, Luis, and we'll come back to fluency. Yeah, I want to talk first about T units because I think T units and clauses relate very much to um, to this idea of complexity, right? So how com complex is a is a, <clears throat> a sentence, for example, will depend in large part on the type of clauses that are being used. So for our purposes, we need to define two terms to really understand this idea of complexity. The first being, well, a clause, and a clause meaning a group of words that has a subject and a verb, and we classify these as being either independent or dependent. Under the dependent type, we have the three relative clause, subordinating clause, and a noun clause. Okay, so uh, you um, are surely uh, familiar with those types of classifications. But in addition to those, uh, this definition of a clause, we're also looking at T units. Now, T units is defined as one main clause and one subordinating clause or one dependent clause, all right? And so what this means is, and here are some examples. If you have a simple sentence, that's going to count as one T unit. A compound sentence, one that has two independent clauses, is going to count as two T units. 
<coughs> a complex sentence, one that has a main clause and a dependent clause that's going to count as one T unit, and a compound complex sentence, one that has three clauses, two independent clauses, and one dependent clause would count as, T, as two T units. Now, this is important for us because this is our unit of analysis. This is how we're uh, counting uh, the, what we call the, the tokens, the words that we're using. We're counting this information so that we can create ratios um, that we're going to look at here a little bit later. But the T unit definition, uh, this is a way that uh, researchers look at text and they determine how complex a text is. When uh, you get into the teaching field, maybe you're already teaching and you're working with learners, right? That part of what you're going to help students do in the development of their writing is not only related to errors, but also uh, discussions around the, the ways that they're using clauses and, and sentences and how sentences connect, right? So this, this relates very much to that. Now, the last, uh, the last aspect of uh, writing development has to do with fluency, and this is fairly straightforward. This is basically how many words um, per uh, a unit, right? And in our case, it's going to be a T unit. But how many words is a writer able to include in, in a text? Okay, so the next slide, next. Okay, so now this is... Uh what we did in the study and a research question was or is what are the salient syntactic morphological and lexical errors encountered by second semester students of a BA in ELT in composition writing so we have 31 learners we actually have more but 31 completed the background questionnaire and the activity for writing for writing a short essay uh, 12 males and 19 females the level of english according to this uh, semester and according to the curricula is from b1 to b2 and the age mean 20.75 in the range 19 to 25 years of age the instrument and the procedure, basically, in one of the, one of their classes, which has asked permission from the teacher to ask the learners to write uh, a short essay, and we basically show them a picture, and in this picture you could see two persons hugging each other, and and we ask the participants of this study to write about friendship whatever whatever came to their minds that they write about that so they had the whole class 50 minutes to do that and obviously we were checking that they uh, were really writing and not just uh, doing something else and we also were helping them in case they had some questions right and we also gave them later on, we gave them an online questionnaire to uh, <clears throat> to elicit demographic uh, information. And from there, later, we determined their linguistic profiles, which we will talk about in, in, a, in a few minutes, right? So our data continue, please. Uh, it's also important to mention that uh, all of the participants signed an informed consent form, giving us permission to not only uh, collect their data, but also to share the results, uh, which we're doing now, and which will also be in the form of uh, publications uh, as well. So the data analysis, the, the essays were analyzed for accuracy, complexity, and fluency. Errors uh, pertained pertaining to punctuation and spelling were ignored, with the exception of comma splices and run-on sentences, as we mentioned earlier, uh, but we did uh, not include punctuation or spelling in this, uh, in this analysis. Also, uh, I should mention, too, that all of the errors uh, that we collected um, 
we both analyzed individually, and we'll look at some examples here in a minute, but we analyzed all of the essays individually and then got together, compared notes, and reached a consensus on all of the errors that were uh, detected. Okay, next slide. So here were some types of errors that were included in our study. You see here a list of pronouns and verbs, prepositions, on down to articles, fragments, right? These were the, the error types and the descriptions. Now, the, you, might, um, you might have seen something similar to this, uh, especially those in my class with a coded, um, like an error code list. So if you have worked with teachers that have used uh, an error code list, you might recognize some of these types of errors since these are um, obviously some of the, the common ones that, that, we, that we see. Uh, the next slide, you will see some examples. Okay, what is, just yeah. before we show you the next slide, what this table, what this table shows is basically the oper operationalization of the type of errors according to what we were looking for, what we were trying to identify, right? So that's what you see. You see the type of error in the first column, <clears throat> and the description is basically referring to uh, some specific operationalization or definition of what each type of error mean, mean, meant to us. All right. Continue. All right, so here we have the morphological type. We have some examples. Uh, you see a column under code. So this is the code that uh, refers to each of the error type. And then you see an actual example. So these are examples that were taken from our data collection, from the essays that we analyzed. And if you look, for example, at uh, subject verb agreement, you see the, the error in this, the verb get, right? And then the correction right? And all the way down. So we have verb tenses. You'll notice we have a lot of different varieties of word formation or word form. And when we did our analysis, these codes that we used, most of the codes were predetermined. That is, most of the codes we were already familiar with having taught writing classes and uh, the different B, uh, cl classes throughout the BA, we are familiar with certain codes. So we use those codes and also the codes that coincide with the literature. But there were also some codes that emerged through the data collection process, which is uh, typical in this case where maybe uh, our particular participants were, uh, maybe they Maybe they had different types of errors that were not commonly found in the literature. So the WF and all of the varieties of the WFs that appear here is an example of a code that emerged where we first were, was, we were just thinking about word form and having one code. But as we got into it, we thought, well, let's, let's categorize these types of word forms. And that's what you see here. And so we have, yeah, the next, uh, in this slide here, we, we see the syntactic errors and the lexical errors along with their codes, the, the name of the error, and the actual mistake that, one example, of course, uh, that we came across in our data collection along with the correction. So this is just to give you kind of an idea of some, of some examples, a few examples of each of the types of errors and the codes that we came across. All right. Here what we have is just an example of one of the essays. It's not the complete essay. I think it's uh, half of it or two thirds of it. Uh, it is not very clear because this, this was scanned and then I put it here in this, in this presentation. Uh, and this is what we did with it. This is the, the accuracy analysis, the complexity analysis, and the fluency analysis all together. So this is very hard to explain, to describe. 
So in the following slide, uh, you have an example of just one paragraph from, from this uh, essay, I think it's paragraph four, which is not here. And basically what you can see here is how we proceeded to identify and to label and to categorize each error that we found. For example, in the first line in this paragraph four, this writer started this paragraph with support help. So we identified this as an agreement error, as a subject verb agreement error, basically. And, and we did the same with the rest. So uh, you can see if there is some word that is underlined, that's an error. If there's just uh, something underlined, but there's no word on it, it means that something is missing. Like in the second line, uh, the, the writer, this student, missed uh, the article, right? The, in this case, uh, to a friend, and so on and so on, right? So you can see, and, the, and we did this with the 31 essays, right? In, the, in, this, in this slide, what you can see is the analysis for complexity. So first, what you see is we identify the T units, and these are indicated by brackets, by the red brackets here. And then later on, we identify the clauses, the number of clauses in each T unit. And then you can see all of them together here in this on this slide, you can see the T units and how many clauses each T unit has, right? So this is the complexity analysis. Do you want to add something else here, Benjamin? Uh, no, just that, uh, again, just remember that for the definition of T units, the that is one main clause with any uh, subordinating clauses that are attached, right? So. This analysis that we're looking at here, this was what uh, was required in order for us later to uh, to do the analysis to figure out the T units involved, and of course doing the word count, which we haven't mentioned, but just doing a word count to T units. Th this was one part of the, the necessary step to do that. And again, this was something we did individually first, then got together and reached a consensus so that there was no, um, yeah, that we were consistent with uh, each of the errors that we found. Okay. Okay, next slide. So here we have the results. We detected in total 901 errors. You'll see along the left-hand side of your screen from top to bottom, based on frequency, the types of errors that we found. Next to each error type, you'll see in parentheses an abbreviation, uh, L, M, and S. Okay, so this will be uh, syntax, uh, morphological, and lexical errors. And you can see with the frequency and the percentage of the total uh, what these errors, uh, you know, how they fell with regard to the frequency. You'll notice 15% for word choice, that's 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 big and word form as well um, all the way down to word order syntactic uh, was less frequent now in the next slide we have it broken down into types of errors so the syntactic errors and sorry because I can't see the bottom of the the screen but uh, the total can you tell can you read the total number of errors 222, which amounts to 25%. Right. So there were 25% of all the errors were syntactical errors. And here you see uh, the types of errors, comma splice, missing word. These were the, the most frequent. And then less frequent were the sentence fragments, the word orders, and the run-on sentences. So here next to each of the descriptions, you see the frequency and also the percentage of this type. All right, so for example, comma splice was 48%, 43% of the total syntactic errors. 
Now, morphological errors, the total here, now I see it, 399 total errors or 44% of the total errors were morphological. You see here we have word, form, verb tense, articles, prepositions, fairly can, fairly equal, more or less. I mean, there's not a, a big change, big difference. It might be a little bit larger here for uh, the verb tense and word form, but fairly equally distributed throughout the different types of morphological errors. And then the next slide we have uh, lexical, basically only two categories. We had 251 total lexical errors or 28% of total errors divided between word choice and wrong word. Again, word choice is a word that is awkward, that still you're able to understand the meaning of the message. A wrong word actually interferes with the meaning. So a word that's used, um, it makes it difficult to understand the, the message. Okay. All right. So that's basically so that's it. it. If anybody has some questions about our study, we would be happy to answer those questions at this time. No questions so far. What do you think uh, commas placing would be like the biggest error? You want to answer can that, you repeat, or you want to answer that? Can you repeat your question, please? What do you think commas placing is the reason, uh, like the biggest error for for them? Commas place is one of the biggest errors, uh, syntactic errors, and we think that this, the reason for this is probably because there is L1 interference, because in Spanish, uh, when you write in Spanish, it is very common to divide independent clauses uh, by using commas, something that you cannot you, you cannot do in English. So probably, <clears throat> probably this is the main reason why this uh, error uh, happened 95 times, which is equal to 43 percent, which is a very which is a very huge percentage, right? That's why we decided to include in our study comma splice errors and run on errors, right? So yeah, that, that one is very common in the Spanish English learners. Well, at least in this context, at least in where we conducted the study at. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Any other question or comment? Um, are you going to, or are you planning to keep on doing the, uh, the research? This research is, is going to finish next month because we've been doing this for almost two years. And we submitted this project for two years. Usually, uh, researchers at the university, they submit, they, they submit a, a research projects for three or more years. We decided to do it for two years since we just began doing this as uh, researchers in the university. Uh, we sent we sent another research research proposal back in July this year, and we're just waiting to see if it's going to be approved, authorized. And that new research is also for two more years. That one is going to be about uh, the implications of explicit instruction. So we're just waiting, uh, probably by the end of this week or hopefully next week, we might get uh, the dictamen for this new project and it's going to be for two years again. So this one finishes this December. All right, thanks. Mm -hmm. Any other question? Students? You, I know you're thinking, híjole, hace mucho que no los vemos y, y, y así yeah. en pantalla, en pantalla nos da miedo. 
Yeah, don't be shy. Don't be shy. Yeah. No pasa de caerse el pelo un día después, pero no se muere uno. <laughs> One of the main things we wanted to focus on or stress in our conclusions is really as English teachers to not just always focus on syntactic errors, but also, um, or accuracy errors, I should say, but also think about complexity and how we can help learners develop and understand complexity. And I think this relates a lot to the comma splice really in breaking down sentences to really know where a sentence begins, where it ends, and then analyze the type of sentence and why it's a simple sentence or a compound sentence or a complex sentence and have those discussions with learners uh, so that we're not just simply focusing on subject verb agreement, right, or the right article, but that we're also looking at it uh, from, from a kind of a discursive a perspective, like a discourse, kind of a discourse analysis way of looking at ideas that move from one sentence to the next. And I think that's one of the key takeaways that we want you to have with this study is that, yes, we can do a deep dive into the error analysis, but we should also look at complexity and understand fluency within the context of uh, students writing because it does vary. We're showing you the total results, but you know, individually, the students' results vary greatly, right? And that's where, as a teacher, we're we're going to have to get in and be able to adapt to the different types of um, accuracy errors and complexity issues and fluency, right? But per student, right? So that's that's really the the key takeaway that I think we want you to walk away with uh, having been exposed to these, uh, the findings. I think and Dr. Benjamin already mentioned this at the beginning of the presentation, that one of the main reasons why we decided to research this topic is because uh, the difficulties that we see the learners go through in writing a good paragraph in writing a good academic essay, considering that academic writing is the most difficult skill. So I'm teaching this semester writing one in Propin, and obviously teaching in this way has been more challenging uh, for me and for them as well. And we're not uh, progressing as as we should, as if when we as if we were, we were in the classroom. And we just finished with uh, the, the four different types of sentences. And they had a lot of problems, a lot. So now we just, this week just began uh, with paragraphs. And hopefully what they learned in uh, the first part of the course, they will be able to apply uh, that knowledge to writing good paragraphs. So this is the reason why. Another reason is that we, in the literature, we found that teachers usually they check when they check uh, 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 some writing by a stu uh, from a student, they basically focus on accuracy, but not on complexity and obviously not even on fluency. So the idea is just as Dr. Benjamin just said, that in the future, if you uh, are gonna be involved in some kind of a writing course, or you want to ask your learners to write something in your English classes that you can check not just accuracy, but also complexity. Just checking accuracy doesn't give us the whole picture, right? And I know you still have some time, but being uh, exposed to this type of research, you guys are going to be also having an opportunity to do your own research when you get into applied linguistics and then later on into academic writing and then thesis seminar. Uh, those are, and some other uh, courses as well, you're going to have some opportunities to uh, do some of what uh, we've been doing, collecting data, analyzing the data, reporting the data, doing a, a review of the literature, 
trying to make sense of the literature and organize and synthesize that information. And so um, this is something that that you will have some experience with as you get through go through the BA. And it's not too early to be thinking about different topics, right? Some topics that are of interest to you, maybe some problems that you faced as, a, as an English language learner or as a teacher. Uh, these are always good topics uh, to think about when you're doing your own research, right? To try to solve a problem. That's really the whole purpose of doing a research, right? Is to try to address a certain problem. So even though you still have some time here, it's not too early to be thinking about different areas of language, for example, that have, are of interest to you um, that you might later research yourself. Yep. All right, guys, if you don't have any other questions uh, or comments, we want to thank uh, teacher w Wendy for uh, talking to you guys about this presentation and for sending you the link to Google Meet. And in case you might have any questions later on about this presentation, about what we're doing with this project or the new project, if it gets approved, you are welcome to contact us our uh, email accounts, right? So is, is there a way to share that here? Yeah, yes, the... you can do it on the chat. Mm -hmm.